Okay, I just want to make a quick video on uh, Coral Castle and uh, how Ed was able to break the stones out of the ground. It was as it broke, not cut. Uh, I found some interesting information about a uh, feather and wedge technique of splitting stone. You'll see in this website. This is your wedge. These are your feathers. Ed used this, but these feathers he used leaf springs from a Ford truck. Okay, a Ford leaf spring has an area four inches of cross. These don't have much area at all. If anybody knows anything about pressure or force, force equals pressure times area. The more air you have, the more force you can make. It's pretty simple. Here's a guy on YouTube splitting stone using feather and wedge. I'll play for you. See all this guy's doing is drilling a hole, putting his feather and wedges in. Fast forward here. It took Ed over 20 years to make this, so it's not a fast process. And basically, as you work the wedge in with the feathers, you tap them like so. Will eventually break the rocks. See this guy's marks here. Ed has these marks. I'll show you. Let me zoom in here. This is Google Maps, Coral Castle, top view. And keep zooming in. Yes, this is where I wanted to go. If I zoom in, here you go, here's the evidence right here on these rocks. You can see the marks from the Ford model leaf spring. He used his own feather and wedge to break the rock out of the ground. As you can see, it's jagged after the breaks, but every rock in Coral Castle has these marks on it. Let's see if I can walk around. Back off a second. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. That guy. Actually, I got a better picture for you here. Okay, there's a picture I made of it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Basically, there are the marks right here. <laughs> and when I went to Coral Castle, these are the pictures I took of the indentations left by the leaf spring. It's on the inside. I so said they're all over every single block. There's rust in it, 
has shown my fingers are pointing in the picture. And nobody really wants to talk about Feather and Wedge. I haven't heard anything on YouTube or anywhere. Everybody wants to say you floated the rocks, you had some kind of electrical device, and that's not true. I did have the magnetic uh, generator, as people call it, but uh, I found through the guide there, he told me it didn't make his generator until much later after he started breaking rocks out of the ground. So it wasn't the electricity he was using to cut the rocks. As you can see all the marks. It's pure mechanical force. I also know a couple Freemasons and the symbology here is unpre unprecedented. I mean... These guys, they got the square, they got the pillar, they got the uh, uh, alignment with the stars and the sky and the moon and all that shit. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty interesting how we did it. But uh, as you can see, it's a little pretty, pretty simple life. Uh, but did some extraordinary things while he was alive. All right, I guess uh, that should wrap it up here. Uh, if anybody else has found a connection with splitting the stones, anybody a stone mason out there? It's no, no secret now. But uh, oh, also I have a uh, guide here that I got at the store. Basically, that's what they're saying he did, using leverage. Doesn't say nothing about feather and wedge. Real, this is a book, Mr. Kant is Dead. Very interesting book, this guy's theory on how he moved it and all that stuff. Why he did it. a photocopy version they sent they sold me some more pictures he's in bottle jack still some things I don't know how he raised the tripods themselves probably another uh, Masonic secret handed down over the time but uh, there's definitely uh, a plenty of symbology in here not sure exactly know what it means but uh, Sure is an interesting place to go visit. And uh, I guess uh, the tour guide even told me a lot of Freemasons go there just to uh, check out all the symbology. This place is loaded with it, you know. Alright, uh, looks like that should uh, complete the old uh, some pictures on the web. Here's some more evidence here now these rocks are interesting because they're smooth and I don't see anywhere he used the feather and wedge let's see do you have any evidence over here oh. now this is interesting uh, in this room hanging over the door when you walk in there are two four leaf springs the same width as the indentations four inches just like this I'm thinking maybe some Roxy smoothed it out so you couldn't see the edges or uh, what his purpose was why some have the bricks and some don't See all these moons, half moons, and Saturn. That's all very symbolic. Here's some more breaks right here. 
and this isn't a solid wall actually he has a plenty of space in between each block and it's filled with uh, his special mortar he used uh, supposed to be limestone mortar it's very hard to make but he made it looks like a solid wall but basically just a bunch of rubble and limestone mortar in between to make it solid same with all these a bunch of mortar in here to keep the Uh, let's keep everything level and flat as you can see the brakes are completely flat they're kind of jagged I tested too to see how flat it was it's not very flat from point to point it's very jagged it's no real flatness of machining or anything a lot of people are trying to figure it out how he did it <laughs> another sim symbolic reference you got the uh, Star David or whatever this is an uh, obelisk they raised I don't see any marks here And he didn't leave any of his wedges here. Let's see for that. Yeah, so even all these, all these have marks on them where he split the stone out of the ground. All right. Uh, hope uh, somebody else gets something out of this. Uh, Took a lot of hard work, but it looks like he was able to do it. Uh, not overnight, he didn't float any stones. There's no magic here. It may seem like magic if he did it in a day, but uh, he didn't. <laughs> so, just a lot of hard work. I think uh, anybody with the right knowledge could be able to do this. And the amount of time, I, a lot of people say, when I tell them about uh, Korakos, they say, oh, this guy must have a lot of time on his hands. Well, no shit, it's his fucking job. I got I got eight hours a day on my hands, and I get paid for it too. <laughs> well, we're coming to work every day, so. Uh, all right, over and out. Take it easy.